Hello everybody, so it's your girl Connie. So welcome back to my channel. So I am so grateful for you all. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend to tell all of them. Um, and I'm so grateful for the feedback. So please, please make sure uh, you subscribe and make sure you know you share with your friends and your family. So that will be so helpful. Um, so today we're going to continue with the series, you know, that Wodemaya did in South Sudan. And today is the remarkable Mundari tribe of South Sudan showers with cow urine so it's a, there is a question mark so i guess we're going to find out in this video if they do shower with you know cow urine so i love the pictures i love the color right now uh, on my screen and so yeah so let's get straight into the video let's go <laughs> goodness look at how cute they are oh my goodness i well i'm sorry for the pose but yeah <laughs> And, you know, if I remember the reason why, like, um, you know, in hot countries, they put, you know, they put sand or, or how do you say, soil um, all over their bodies. It's just to, you know, protect the skin from the sun. Um, I know there's so many countries who do that. So, yeah, so that's a good, you know, sun protection, natural sun protection screen. <laughs> Let me know if you know the name of the instrument. Uh, I have no idea. Ooh, shisha. That's crazy. What, what, why are they doing this? They do this uh, like before. Before I dance. Yeah. Before we never had that. We are going to have a dance today. Oh, okay. So everyone in here knows that there's no. There comes a maestro, Wodemaya. He's so short compared to, uh, you know, South Sudanese. And we saw in the past video that, like, uh, I guess the, the, the tallest humans come from this tribe in South Sudan, the Mundari tribe. So let's appreciate it. It's going to be a dance today. Yeah, but what time is the dance going to be in session? Be in the evening. Like in the evening. After the time, down, pull the cattle. Then they'll grab it again. And now, guys, we'll come. Today, we're in Terkeka. It's just a few kilometers outside Juba, and we find ourselves in the heart of Mundari land at one of their cattle camps. The Mundari people are one of the cattle keeping tribes of South Sudan. Such cattle camps exist all across the country, and here life is quite unique. From the 64 tribes in South Sudan, around I still can't get over the fact that um, South Sudan, they have 64 tribes, 64 tribes, that's crazy. I had no idea. And that's why I think it's very important, um, you know, what, I mean, African YouTubers are doing right now, they're traveling in Africa so they can, you know, just change the African narrative. There are so many places we don't really want to go to because we have this thing from, you know, from the media that, you know, uh, it's not safe and stuff like that and but I mean these videos are really showing us that it's that's not true we need to change the narrative and I'm learning so much and that's why instead of me just watching the videos from my end alone <laughs> that's the reason why I decided to share with you guys so we can watch them together so you know we can just share stuff so feel free you know just to leave some comments and let's talk about it or almost 90% of them are from the Nilotic group of languages, many of whom are cattle keepers. Um, so for these communities, including the Mundari, wealth is counted in cattle and not in cash. Reminds me of the butter trade time, you know, where they used to do like exchanges. There was no money back in the day, so they used to, you know, exchange um you know stuff be it vegetables with something or cattle with something else in exchange so it's interesting to know that up until today they still do so and that's why they really cherish um cattle and i guess they are nomads they must move from one place to another just you know uh for pasture <laughs> 
It's estimated that South Sudan livestock population is estimated around 12 million cattle, and that's among the highest in Africa. And there's a joke that people say here that we have as many cattle in South Sudan as we have people in South Sudan. Yeah, man. Nice to meet you, man. I'd say, is this Salam? Yeah. Salam, Salam, Salam. Hey, from Ghana. Oh my god, I just love the look on their face, like, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? I mean, I just love the big, the face expressions from the South Sudanese. They're like, what's wrong with you, guy? What are you talking <laughs> Oh my goodness, I just love, I love this guy. Mm. Kabisa Ghana, mm. I, I don't even know what I'm saying. I mean, you guys, why are you talking to them in Swahili? This is not Kenya. This is South Sudan, who am I, okay? So that's so funny, like, Kabisa Sana, and I, oh my goodness, why? <laughs> Say, but uh, nice to meet you, man. <laughs> Hi! Hi! I want to look like you. Oh, fine. Uh, good? Uh-huh. How do I do this? I want to be like you. Okay. It's okay? Yeah. How, how do I do that? This one? You put this on your face? Wow! Salam. Man, good to see you. Yay! Okay, alright. See, this one. I just look at how the South Sudanese are so svelte, you know? I just wonder if they're like large Sudanese people, especially from the Mudari tribe. Let me know because I'm just so curious. Like, when you look at them, most of them are tall you know, dark and handsome and beautiful and they're very svelte, you know. Um, so I've never seen a fat Sudanese and I, I, I haven't, I have never. So just, you know, just, I apologize if I'm ignorant about it, but just let me know, please. You put it on your face. This one. I put this one. Where? My... I put it down or? <laughs> no, can you do it? Let me see. Do it like okay, like this. <laughs> yeah, I look fresh. I think so. Fresh and clean, fresh and clean. So fresh, so clean. <laughs> yes, you do. What's up, beautiful people? It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Ghana, baby, right here in Juba, South Sudan. I mean, I'm doing this for the culture because, like I said, we're showing Africa to the world. And when you're showing Africa to the world, we always want to educate and also entertain you, right? So I came to South Sudan. I've shown you how beautiful the people are. But right now, I just want to let you know that when you come to South Sudan, there is a culture that you all need to know. And the people right here, they have a name and the tribe, I don't even know. So my brother, can you come and talk to me? Uh, we, we are the Mundari people. Mundali people? Uh, Mundari. Who, who are the Mundali people? Uh, man, the Mundari. Not Mundali. Are you from, I mean, what am I from another life? I think you were Kikuyu or something, you know? Kikuyu is a Kenyan tribe, um, and they the, the R's, there's this a big problem with the R's, so not Mundali, but Mundari, okay? <laughs> Just say. Okay. Yeah. Oh, you, you guys live around, along there now? Yeah. The tall? We are tall, we are Dark skin? Yes. Amazing. Yo, this they said this place is a cattle camp. What makes this place so special, man? Uh, actually, uh, since we are nomads, uh -huh. we, we move from one place to another looking for pasture and water. Uh -huh. We have our places where every time when pasture is done here, they know where to go next. Like, oh. uh, they know where they will go next, where they can find grass and water. Uh -huh. So, they are going to be here for some period of time. Because these cows are very many, so they'll finish up the grass and they'll have to look for a new place to go. So, from here, when the grass finishes, you need to move again? They have to move to another place. Wow! But there's so many cows in here, there's so many cattle. Is it for one person or for different people? It's actually, the, the cattle are for families. Oh, different families. families. Different families, yes. I, I met young kids in here. And this is so symbolic, it's like the togetherness, you know. I mean, he said, I mean, the cattle is from different families, so... 
they come together. I, I have no idea how they get to differentiate the different, um, you know, the cows, the, the, I don't know if they're a sheep or anything, but yeah, I think it's just so symbolic, you know, it's for different families. And I'm sure children do still, you know, when you're a young boy, you can get a cattle from your family. I know it used to happen in the past and I still, still, still the case. So let's find out. Yeah, that are telling me that they own a cow in here. <laughs> So these guys actually own cows in here, man. It is crazy, man. Yet. And I don't even have a cow. You see, I told you. How many cows do you have? How many cows do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Gelo. And how many cows do you have? Muda. Gelo. Gelo. So can you so can you believe that these guys? I mean, these kids own cows here, man. They are rich. Don't don't see them like this, man. Cause you know how much a cow costs. <laughs> yo, yo, you own a cow. What? Yes, actually, when you are born, you are born to a family where there are cows and there are cattle. Mm -hmm. At times, your, your father will start telling you that uh, this cow is yours, this is yours, this is yours. And if you are like someone who is born. I wonder if um, only boys own cows. Do they give a cow to a girl as well? Uh, considering that, you know, uh, girls bring cows to the family you know because of the dowry and stuff like that so just just wondering i i don't know maybe they will talk about it but it, it will be interesting to know if you know girls to get um cows from their father i don't know like one in the family and the rest are girls and stuff it's direct that all the cows going to be used when your father is gone so, so so which means that like like when they give birth to a girl, does a girl has to own a cow? No, no, no. A no. girl is not qualified to own a cow. <laughs> Excuse me, guys, but I'm just looking at what am I, you know, with all the, you know, the, the what do you call it, the soil on his face, and he's just talking so seriously. Uh, it's it's just funny. It's just funny, you know, just to have like a deep conversation looking like that. But um, yeah, it's it's interesting. Yes, actually, the girl brings in cows more when she told you is married with over. Hey, hey, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So, which means that here, cattle is everything. Yes, it's everything. It's what you used to marry, mm -hmm. where you get food, you, where when you're, you're sick, they sell to, to take someone to the hospital. When you are sick, yeah, they have to take a cow. They sell it, they get money, and then they take the person to the hospital. Which means that um, you guys don't have cash. Cash, we don't have cash. You don't have but cash. If we have, we have less. We have less. We like. Oh, I told you guys, it's it's like the barter trade, you know, kind of thing that used to uh, take place ways years years ago. So it's interesting because I think we, it just brings people back to the fundamentals. You know, it's just family and you know and you just sell them when you need to you need some money just for you know just to go to the hospital and maybe educate the children as well but um that's it's interesting that's really interesting to know we don't have that much oh so which means you use cows for everything cows is everything for us here whoa yes that's incredible so let's say you want to pay your son's school fees you use a cow yes oh. a cow. you sell a cow then you say name the school fees <laughs> I have been to so many African countries and I bet you I've never seen anything like this before. These people literally worship their cows as gods and to the extent that they don't sell the cows, neither do they eat their own cows. You know what, when I got in here... Oh, they don't eat cow, but okay, that's interesting. They, they never eat cow meat like a nice nyama choma, I would say. No? Okay. Yeah, I wanted to buy a cow and give it to the community, but it was extremely difficult to buy a cow in here. I had to buy one of the most expensive cows I've ever bought in my entire life. Uh, the fact that you came with people like us, okay. because they are family members, well, okay. that's why they're making it actually cheap for you. Okay. If you are someone who came here with some other guy, so it was going to be very expensive. Very expensive for me. Yes. Okay. So I give you three hundred. One people like a brother. The negotiation is finished. They also have a strong belief that their cattle is not worth a rich man's assets or wealth. 
meaning they barely eat or sell their cattle. I know most of you will be wondering if they don't eat their own cows, then what do they eat oh. in here? The cows are mainly kept for dowry. So during marriages and marriage negotiations and not necessarily for food. As I tell as I told you, um, the cows is wealth, so you're not you're not going to eat wealth. Instead you'll keep it so that when someone's getting married, then that's where um, you kind of uh, need those cows. So they actually don't kill cows for food. Um, instead, uh, they'll eat the older cows or a cow that's dying or dead. Um, but while the cow, though the cow's still alive, they would use it obviously to. Look at that! <laughs> it's unbelievable! Wow, it's so beautiful. Milk uh, to milk it. They also drink the blood, not directly, but you can. Um, there's a way that you can cut an art, one of the arteries or veins on the neck, and then just drain a bit of blood. Sometimes they mix it with milk and then drink that, and it's quite. You know what? Uh, the Maasai do the same. You know, because um, apparently the blood and mix it with milk is very healthy, and so they just don't kill the cow, but they there's this like arrow that they throw into the cow's vein then the blood flows and then the, the vein actually heals so I mean it's not harmful for the cow so okay so you see I, that's what I said in the last video I feel like in Africa we're just one people we just we come from the same um, ancestors but then you know we traveled you have you know you have different um, you know branches that formed after that so it's you know basically this and even the foods and talking about food about culture about stuff like that so it's really interesting to see that you know the mundari tribe as well drink uh you know they mix the blood the cow blood plus uh milk so interesting and it's healthy apparently i i will never taste that <laughs> never. but yeah why not for them nutritious um, also sometimes they just take the blood alone and then you heat it up and cook it and then it it changes in texture and that's also a source of food but deliberately just killing a cow for food that's not something that's very common so you're saying that girls brings more cows which means if the girl is getting married how many cows do you guys need to give to the person before the person get married uh, <laughs> okay during a marriage uh, ceremony uh, uh, yeah, marriage Tell ceremony. Mm -hmm. The girl will live. In, in fact, our, our culture is not like other cultures where you come and uh, you be like, I, I want your daughter in hand in marriage. Mm -hmm. It's not like that. You and your your girl, you agree. You agree that on this day, I will come to your house. Mm. The man. Mm. The man's house. Mm. So she will go there, then they will inform the family in their village that mm. uh, the girl has left. To our husband's place. Whoa! That is how they do it. It's not like you can uh, you can ask the family that has married daughter. You just come and take the girl and take it to your house. The girl goes herself alone. You don't you, go, you don't go there to get it because if you go there, you you'll be you'll be in problems. So first of all, not to get eat. <laughs> so that's the English teacher in me. Don't mind. Uh, but if I understand, um, so. A girl goes to the boy's house and doesn't tell the parents and so the parents find out later on so they have no choice but to pay the cow so it's like a surprise you know I'm getting married I'm married so it's like a sort of a kidnapping kind of um, uh, thing so okay I see you see so again there's so many tribes who've done who always do that you know the girl just disappears one day and then she apparently she's at her you know her future husband's house and so the, the 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 family looks for the daughter and they find her this place and they have to pay um dowry you know you know just to accept in the marriage um so okay it's interesting they'll beat you up what they'll beat you up wow you know you know you can't you can't come to to the girl's uh father and you tell her that i want to marry her daughter no why why would you come and tell me am i are you going to marry me <laughs> <laughs> so, so you have to, you have, you have to talk to the girl, and you'll be like, uh, "This date, mm. come to my house." Wow. So the girl will prepare with some ladies, mm. then they will take her. Wow. As others remain behind to 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 tell the family that the girl has gone to a place of marriage. After now, after when the girl has gone to the man's house, mm -hmm. now the the elders will come in. Mm -hmm. Elders will come in, and they will they will, they will set the number of cattle they want for their daughter. 
Whoa. It would be like 80, 90, 100, 70. So, so which is you don't get <laughs> agreement before you get married. As soon as the girl is in your house, the family will come for their cows. They are coming for their cows. That's why girls bring more cows. <laughs> that is it. So we have a, you have girls, you are rich. Whoa. That is it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That is it. Girls are blessings. Girls are blessings. And in so many African countries for so many years, uh, girls are blessings. And I know there is just, I think in India it's different. So let me know if you're from India and you're watching me right now. I think from India it's, it's different. The boy, the, 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 uh, the, the, no, the girls give the dowry if I'm not wrong. So it's it's the opposite. So let me know if I'm wrong, but I think in, in India it's different. But most African countries the same. It's a case, and yeah, and so the tradition. It's like now it's becoming more like um, a tradition thing, even though countries have become more and more civilized. I would say that the culture is kind of dying, but people still perpetuate that, uh, and not just giving money, but giving and uh, not giving uh, cattle to the families, to the bride's family, but just giving um, you know money and and you know just negotiate in a just symbolic way of saying it's official you have our blessings and you can have a beautiful marriage so it's interesting to know you know <laughs> yeah it's nice it's nice to know it's not buying people it's not buying somebody it's 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 it has nothing to do with buying the girl but it's just a traditional way and a symbolic way of saying yes i love your daughter and i want to marry her and yeah just and then the parents accepting the dowry and fixing it and accepting it it's just a way of saying you have our blessings and welcome to the family so it's simple as that the thing whoa that's impressive but yeah. can you take me around there's something that i want to understand yeah so i want to know what is he doing he's actually uh working on the hair Okay, they do this. Actually, after doing this, you first go the urine from the cow. When you see a cow urinating, uh -huh. you go there, you collect the urine, or you put your. Oh my God, I can't. <laughs> I can't. Okay, so what? Okay, so um, if I understand, so the urine, what does it do to the head? Does it like dye it or something? I feel like your the urine kind of changed changes the the hair color or something. Um, what? So you just have to time like perfect timing when the cow is urinating and you just go in there and you just place your head and all right. So why not? Well, but I think is it a natural dye or something? Wow. And apparently I know there's there's a country. Um, no, I was going to say oh Vietnam no. There is a there is a country where they do the same, actually, and they do it with human urine, and apparently it's good for the hair growth and it helps your hair become thicker and stuff like that. So for beauty and also for the skin as well, apparently it's good, but um, without me, okay. <laughs> your, head, your head there, yourself. You put it there. That urine, like, covers the hair. Okay. The, the hair will come off. You see, I told you, I thought so. I thought so because, okay, well, all right, interesting. Not brown, like brownish dye, red. Dye that is dye, in fact. Okay. It is dye. Then doing this, they do this so that the hair can like, they can come out in these coils. Oh. Are you seeing? Come, come here and see these coils. Are you seeing these coils? What? So they do this. They keep on like. Oh, they, so they, they start with the urine. Yeah, the okay. urine. The urine, then they keep on doing this with the with the whatever, with yeah. the ash. Ash. Yeah, and that is the only treatment for it to come out properly. To come out properly. Yeah. Nice to meet you, man. Eh? Do for me. Any guy can When you do that. Uh -huh. Look at that. What? Oh, this is great. It looks so good. <laughs> what? All right, so cow urine and ash, that's all it takes in a lot of time, I think, is patting the hair, you know, for the coils to, you know, for the urine to, to go in and for the for the color to come out. So, okay. Oh, that re looks really nice. Let me know. Do you like it? Guys, actually, ladies, you said taking you as someone who is, someone who is very serious and someone who really... So, you become attracted to women? You are very attractive when you have that. You are someone who cares about 
yourself. Whoa. Yeah. So they have to do it and make sure you don't allow water to enter. When they pour water there, it gets spoiled. It becomes black. They don't want it to look black. They want the thing that brown red, like brown, brown, yellow, yellow. What is this kid doing? He's he's cleaning, he's removing cleaning the cow dung, collecting the cow dung so that they can put them somewhere and dry them. Then later on, they burn them to the ashes that they use for smearing their bodies and and so uh, I remember as a child, so my grandmother, so that's my mom's mom. So when we used to go visit her back in the village, uh, we used to repair the mud house with cow dance. So I remember it was so funny, you know, when you're coming from the city and you have to collect cow dance. In the beginning, it's a little bit yikes, you know. And then we, we, I used to love it, you know. My siblings and I used to love it. And so we used to collect the cow dung in the compound and then stuck it up like that and then we used to mix it with sand you know we used to collect sand around and then mix it up and then smear the the walls you know because sometimes i mean after some time it dries out and then uh you have some holes in there so we had to like cover up the the, the um the hole so that was really uh interesting so much it just reminded me of that and wow it's so nice and cow dung when you collect it fresh from the cow sorry but it's warm actually it's really warm and it's, it's really interesting to see that so they use it that's what they use uh, you know just to smell their bodies and stuff okay interesting then that's where the ash comes from that they used for the body and also for the hair so okay it makes sense all right okay interesting for cleaning the cattle Yes. When I came in here, I'm seeing people using urine to even wash their face. Yes. Why well, is it because there's no water here? At times, because water is far away from here, like now we don't have water near here, so you can actually use the urine to wash your face. You can use when there's no water, you can use it to shower. You can use the cow urine to shower. Yeah, when you collect enough, you can use it to shower. And w when you shower with the cow urine, it doesn't affect the skin color. It doesn't affect. At all. It doesn't cause any skin disease? It doesn't. In fact, they take it as it, it cures diseases, it's skin diseases. That's why they, they shower with it. Wow. Yes. That's impressive. Yeah. Try it out. So we have our answer. You know, do the Mundari tribe of South Sudan shower with cow urine? So the answer is yes. <laughs> the answer is yes. And apparently it doesn't affect the skin. I, I don't know, but apparently not. So I think they've been doing it for so many years. So because if it did, they, then they would stop. So I guess it doesn't. Um, yeah, all right, interesting. Momok, take it to yourself and then. Edo, Edo, Momok, man. Take it to man. And then see yourself. You see yourself? Don't mind, man. Uh huh. Cattles are moving. Where are they going right now? They are going to the direction where, like, they are grazing, where they graze from. Yeah, they have to take them to the side where there's enough grass. They go there, then like the evening hours, they return them back. They return them back. Yes. Oh, okay. So right now they are all going there. They are all going. That's it. At times, Arida. Yeah. That okay. That okay. Are you good? Are you fine? Good. Yeah. Okay. I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, all right. I'm yeah. Fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Oh, so right now they are going to Greece, huh? Yes. Greece. Oh, interesting. They're they're going for they're going, but actually. If they want to minimize on the way these cows are going to like finish up the pasture and stuff, they're going to separate. They're going to separate. Like, have you seen the other side? They're not releasing them. Yeah. They're going to release the other side and they take another direction. I see. They will release those ones and they will go this side, then these ones go this side. Once all the cattle go out for grazing, that is when the real music and dance begin. Let the party begin. Let's go. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Believe me or not, this was the best day of my life. Wow. Just to see stress-free people just having fun, enjoying themselves was a whole new experience to me that I didn't want to leave this place. <laughs>
much as I am, I think it's, uh, it just, it's refreshing to see happy people. It's refreshing to see tradition, to see culture, to see simplicity. It's so refreshing. I, I, I just love this. And I'm so happy that, you know, um, that I mean, Wardemai is doing this and so many other African YouTubers and thanks to him. Uh, people are opening up uh, their eyes and, you know, just opening up their horizons because there's so much in Africa. And I, I'm so, like, I can't wait to do as many reaction videos as I can. So please, if you like what you're seeing right now, just make sure you subscribe. Um, just support me, okay? Support your sister. And so let's watch these videos together. And this is so nice. It's dope. Dope. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highest he could jump. Okay, excuse him. All right, he's not as tall as you are, so you know. I mean, he did good. <laughs> That's okay for the day. Literally, when I go here, it's full of love, man. I, I, I'm just like, they are old, son. That's never my life. Like, ah, ah. <laughs> oh my god, you stressed him up over the mind. Like, seriously. How could you just lie on him like that? Why? 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 <laughs> so, you know? Wow. <laughs> Yo, so I mean, they live here, kind of friendly people. I've been with them. I wanted to dress like them and look like them. And the experience has been so beautiful, man. Can I, can I have a handshake? 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 Check my blow. Yeah. Okay. Give me. All right. Okay. I mean, let's go. Yeah, man. This is how it is here in the cattle camp. You know what? They're living their best life, man. These people you see right here are super rich. Don't underestimate them because they got over five hundred thousand cows in here, and everyone in here got their own cows. So I just wanted to share this with you. So if you don't know, now you know. So help me educate somebody else by liking this video and don't forget to share. And so yes, please guys. So help me as well by subscribing, you know, just share with your friends and let's watch these videos together. Let's react together. And um, so thank you so much for watching and thank you for joining me and see you in the next video. Bye.